Okay, this is um, a Simulink tutorial and it's on Subsystems 2. If you haven't watched the Subsystems 1, go back and watch that. But basically what we did in Subsystems 1 is we used that subsystem uh, uh, element from the uh, Simulink component uh, browser library, library browser, and um, inside that component we put a DC motor. Okay. Now if we double clicked on that DC motor, we entered two parameters, armature inductance, armature resistance. Okay. And um, if we click this down arrow, we can kind of see our motor. Armature voltage coming in, omega, which is RPMs, radians per second going out, back EMF that you get in a DC motor. Uh, there's your electrical dynamics, mechanical dynamics, and this guy right here is a constant that, can, is, that shows the relationship between torque and current. Well, what I want to do is continue on here and populate all these parameters. Okay, so... In general, uh, this guy right here is, um, let's change the name. This would be our torque constant. Okay, and um, put like a K sub M there. All right, well, actually, I don't need K sub M there. What I'll do is we'll just replace this guy with the variable K sub M, which we'll create in a little bit. And then, let's see, the mechanical part is a function of inertia and friction. All right, so what you've got here is you've got inertia, and then you've got friction, which we'll call K sub F. All right. And then down here, let's see, this guy represents back EMF. And we will call that guy K EMF. And what I'll do here is I'll open this a little wider so you can see K EMF. So now what you've got is you pretty much have your you know, model of a DC shunt uh, motor and it's made up of two transfer functions that are essentially low pass filters. Parameters are characterized by inductance and resistance on the electrical, inertia and friction on the mechanical. Got a torque constant and then you got a back EMF. Coming in here is your voltage. You're going to run it through a summer, which would be an op amp circuit. You're going to get a voltage out. And if you look at the units of this electrical, it's one over R impedance. Okay, so a voltage divided by impedance gives you a current. So at this point, going into your K sub M amplifier is a current, and then output is a torque. And the mechanical has as an input torque and an output omega, which is radians per second. All right, so we can click back to our subsystem, and um, this is the higher level, and this is our DC motor. Now, again, we have an explorer over here on the left. There's my overall system. There's my subsystem, DC motor. There's my higher level system. Now you click back and forth there. Okay, you can close that guy down to get a little more room. Uh, let's see, if we go inside here, well, we put all our parameters. Let's go back out to a higher level. And now if we double click, only two of those parameters are there, L and R. So we need to add the rest of them. So we right click, mask, edit mask. And then I go to parameters and there's my L and R. Well, I need to add the rest of them. So the next one I need to add is enter. Oh, uh, let's see, this is the torque constant, and that would be K sub M. Call that K sub M there. Okay. Then I need to enter my inertia constant. And we'll call that just J. Okay. And then we could say enter the um, friction constant. Now there's all kinds of friction here. Um, we're just looking at a uh, simple model. Okay. And then let's see, enter back EMF. Okay. And we'll call that K EMF. That'll be a variable K EMF. And then of course this guy right here is KF. So now I've got six parameters, armature inductance, armature resistance, torque constant, inertia constant, uh, friction constant, and uh, back EMF. Apply, OK, and now when I double click on this guy, it's going to prompt me for all six of those. For a torque constant, why don't we use 0 0.1? For an inertia, why don't we use 0 0.02? And then for friction, how about a 0 0.2? And then your back EMF constant is actually the same as your torque constant for a DC shot motor. So I'll make that 0 0.1. Now let's... Uh, save that guy and run it and then there you go so really we didn't do anything other than just make those parameters variable and notice we apply a dc step and then the motor takes about two seconds comes up to speed and stabilizes okay well let's change some of the parameters 
Let's change our torque constant to 2, and then, of course, that requires us to change back EMF to 2, and then run it. Okay, now we get some um, overshoot. So actually here, um, you get some overshoot. It actually, the rise time decreases because it comes up to speed really quick, but it has some overshoot, and then it stabilizes back down here to 0.44. What did it stabilize before? And let's change those guys back to what they were, 0.1. 0 0.1 okay yeah so in the when we the previous case it stabilized at 0 0.44 now it stabilizes about two and a half okay great so now we have all those constants in there well we can bring this output up to the input simply by putting uh, an amplifier in there now i don't need to do it in a subsystem what i can do here is i could add it at the higher level all right all right so let's uh let's do that let's keep that guy there oops Move this thing around. Yeah, I'll put that up to there. Put that to there. Okay, so good. Going to bring this down to there. Uh, let's go get an amplifier. Commonly used blocks. There's an amplifier. I will drop that in. Now, what's going on right here? It looks like I got a little... Let's delete that guy and then just reconnect it. Okay. And I'll drop my amplifier on top of there. And if you look at this picture over here... Oops. It looks we, like we stabilized at about 0.25. Well, 1 over 0.25 is 4, so let's uh, change that amplifier there to 4. And now run the system. And there you go, yeah. Didn't quite get all the way up to 1, but we got pretty close. So yeah, so now we're applying a unit step, and then our motor comes up to speed and stabilizes at about between 2 and 3 seconds. There you go. All right. Well, let's see. Now, how well does running a DC motor in open loop respond to changes. Well, how can we do that? Well, let's say, I think at this point, what I'm going to do is save that for another tutorial. So here you've got a DC motor. Now, this is an open loop system that you're looking at right here. But if you go inside the DC motor, you see the DC motor has feedback through its back EMF. So the DC motor is a closed loop system. But when you operate it in this form right here, where you're taking a step function, amplifying it, and driving the armature voltage, it's run in open loop. All right? So I'm going to stop here. And then on subsystems 3, we'll look at how you can uh, model a varying load on the shaft of that motor. All right. Thanks for watching.